to the Mother Days podcast. I am your host, Sarah Wright Olson. I almost forgot my name. <laughs> um, your name's Sarah, and I'm Teresa yeah. Palmer. How's it going? I'm, I'm guys, really pumped because our guest today, I feel like I'm already working out on the podcast, and we've already <laughs> planned that this is my new coach. This is going to be my fitness coach. That's I'm right. going to join the Sarah Bandcamp. I'm jumping on, and I'm going to start getting fit. Woo! <sighs> okay, I'm so excited. So excited to introduce <laughs> you all <laughs> to um, someone who has changed my life. And I've been following her religiously um, and was like, desperately hoping that she would come on our podcast. And And this was even before she was pregnant. And I was like, Oh, my gosh, this is so exciting. Um, you guys introducing you to Callie Gullickson. Did I say it right? You said it perfectly. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Welcome to the show. Kelly is a amazing Peloton instructor. She is um, our strength trainer extraordinaire. She also has collaborated for some amazing workout wear with BYOE, Bring Your Own Energy, okay. <laughs> is her um, mantra. And Kelly, you started off as an athlete. You were a dancer. You come from a family of athletes and you found yourself in this entire world of strength training how did you get there what happened tell us your story yeah so I'm literally one of six kids everyone oh my god yes my we dream big plan um and my dad was a professional baseball player and then from there my mom played tennis in college and literally the repertoire of what all my siblings did is nuts. Like my oldest sister, track and field Notre Dame. Second sister oh, won the U.S. Open for mixed doubles. My what? brother went to Georgia for baseball. My sister oh my went God. to Georgia for tennis, won NCAAs. <gasps> Got to play in the U.S. Open doubles with my sister. What? <laughs> uh-huh. And then there's my little sister who went to UVA for tennis. And me, I'm like, okay, I like love sports, but not that dance is not a sport, but I was like, I'm a little more creative artsy. And so I got into dance. It led me to New York, um, loved it. However, I feel like maybe like looking in the mirror constantly was got a little hard and I started to like aim towards perfection, which we all know is like not a thing. Mm. Um, and it became not fun for me. So on the side, they were also like, well, you should do some cross training. So I started cross training, taking a different fitness studios and fell in love with fitness, specifically uh. strength training. Um, and just like the confidence that it gave me and the way it made me feel. And then I worked at a few studios, COVID hit. I went back to Florida for about three months. I was wedding planning, but was supposed to get married in 2020. Oh, wow. Um, I was planning on going back to New York the day New York went to, into quarantine. And then <gasps> oh my, my husband God. and I were like, let's just stay in Florida with my parents. <laughs> we stayed <laughs> in Florida, lived with my parents for three months. I said to my husband, are you sure you want to do that? Like, are, we can leave. It's okay. He's like, no, this is great. I said, okay. You're the one oh who gosh. said yes. Um, and then out of the blue, Peloton reached out. And this was literally after we decided to move down to Florida. So there's like a certain amount of days. I forget what it is, but... They're like, you know, you can't get your deposit back from your house. And I'm like, it's fine. Like, I'm moving here. The day after you couldn't get the deposit back, I get a DM from Peloton. And I'm like, you're joking. You're joking. You're joking. Oh, my <laughs> God. So uh, I went through the whole process, all of that. Like, every single day, I was like, let's decorate the house. And then I'd be like, no, let's not, because I may be moving back to New York. Um, oh. and then uh, I ended up getting the job and my husband, I remember I was like, Oh, Chris, we just moved. Like I knew Peloton was like the best place to work, you know, but like yeah. 
I was like, ah, oh, like, is there, is it a sign that, you know, like I, we should stay I'm my family. And he said, Callie, don't you dare. He's like, if you oh. see, like, if you see someone else taking your spot that you know that you got after this whole long process, you are not going to be happy with yourself. I'm like, you're right. And then literally joined Peloton and my life has changed ever since. I love that is such an amazing story I think I've had like some sort of a fitness or workout or something routine like you know basically ever since I was in my 20s but um it was never focused on in any one direction. It was like, I just like movement and I'll take a yoga class here. Or I'll do like a bike class there and like nothing. It always just felt like I was like making time during the day to do it. And, and then there was this like one time and I think it was like 2021, Eric had got me the Peloton bike. I was so excited. I was doing the bike. And then someone said something to me about doing strength training. Oh, it's my doctor. That's what it was. So I, I was, it was my doctor doing a physical and he was like strength training is the way to longevity he's like if you want Mm -hmm. longevity in life he's like longevity is about making your muscles strong to protect your bones and he's like you're going to feel really good you're going to feel strong it's going to make you like stand differently and like he's like just watch just try it I just want you to try it and it was because I had done a bone density test and there was some like like some of the density in my um, hips had gone down, like the percentage had, it was like, he's like, you really need to build this up around your hips. And so then I one day tried one of your classes and you are amazing at telling stories while you're working out that make me laugh so much. Like I giggle at all the Charlie stuff and like, I'm like, girlfriend better be sponsored by Trader Joe's because she talks about Trader Joe's every class. Not yet. We, not yet. We're working okay. on it. It's, it's going to happen. Okay. It's going to happen. Manifest that. And, <laughs> Manifest, Manifest that. Exactly. Um, but it really, for anybody who's curious, it really did change my life. And and it's like five, 10 minutes a day to like 20, 30 minutes a day, whatever it is that you can do a strength training class and you feel different. You feel stronger. Mm. It's such a thing where you walk into a room and you're like, oh, my body feels so good. So um, you're like one of your mantras is bring your own energy. Do you want to talk a little bit about that and like your class or, you know, where people can like find you in that? Totally. Um Obviously, I do love fitness. I do love working out. But, you know, I am human. So some people are like, how do you do this for work? You know, and I'm like, I know there are some days where like, it is literally like, I am not there. I always have to remember, like, it is not my workout. It's more so for everyone taking the class and for me to help motivate them. Yeah. So I found myself being like, okay, I have to have the best energy when I wake up, when I go into these classes, um, because it's not only a job, but I am hopefully changing other people's lives. And that's like the benefit of it. So someone actually like DM'd me and was like, your classes, you have to always bring your own energy. And I've been like waiting. There's like all these amazing instructors that I work with. They have these like (laughs) motivational lines and like, I love working with them. But like, for me, I'm like, Oh gosh. Okay. Like I was like really trying to deep. Yeah. I'm like, what, <laughs> what do I stand for? I'm like, I don't even know. Like, so this person said that and I said, Oh my gosh. I literally was like BYOE, not BYOB, but BYOE. And I started <laughs> saying that. And I, it like is truly like not only like what I go by when I don't want to work out, when I'm not feeling my best, but like, you know, we are humans. I have so much stuff to going on outside of work and to be able to show up as my best, best self, feel my best self. I always have to remember B Y O E. And it does help because I'm like, okay, you have two options. You can like, you know, dwell in negative or prosper in the positive. Yeah. So what are, what path are you going to take? What are you going to choose? And we always have that choice. So I'm like, I'm going to choose to bring my own energy. So that has <laughs> not only helped me in my workout classes, but you know, off the mat as well. That is so cool. I recently noticed that you were pregnant. 
And (laughs) it is so exciting um, following your journey. And also, I think a lot of times, you know, women are like, I'm not really sure what to do during my pregnancy or, you know, like, can I continue to do the things that I was doing before? And um, it's really been so much fun to watch you as your, you know, baby is growing (laughs) and you're continuing to do these same workouts that you were doing five months ago and you make some moderations here and there. And, you know, as, as you're going along and I'm watching you like smiling. So I'm like, I wonder if she's going to be able to do that, like (laughs) Paula hold. And I'm like, no, she's going to do something else, you know? (laughs) And, um, and it's just, that's so awesome. So can, can you tell us a little bit about um, how this has been? This is your first baby, right? This is my first baby. I'm so excited. Aww. And honestly, when I also like first found out that I was pregnant, I did feel like a little bit of pressure because I'm like, yeah, I'm in front of millions of people you know, what's going to happen to my body. That's, you know, something that like, we all are like, Oh, how is my body going to react? Everyone's pregnancy is different. Everyone's body is different. So I was just very unsure. And I am also just so thankful because throughout this process, the one thing that like, I'm definitely going to miss from pregnancy is I feel like, like the womanhood that you start to feel when you get pregnant, when you're close to becoming a mom has been like so supportive. And I'm like, wow, like women, we are amazing. Like, like, (laughs) you know, people say to me, I can't believe you're still teaching. I'm like, it's literally because of you all like continuing to support me and be there for me. And like, you know, I, I am one of six kids and five of us are girls. So I do have them to help guide me. But as far as like teaching, I, that's like when I feel my best. Um, The the days when I'm like sitting on the couch and I'm like, okay, I I need to rest, which obviously I do rest, but like getting up and then like having the first two minutes, I feel a little ancient. I'm like waddling. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. But like during my workouts, I forget I'm pregnant. Like sometimes I'm like, Oh, like I did a push up and my stomach hit the mat and I was like, Oh, that's a first, I've never felt that before. (laughs) Um, that's new. So it's literally just, you know, I've looked at it as, okay, if something is a little uncomfortable, if I do notice, you know, there's the thing like the coning, the doming, um, part of your core, if you like see any of that, obviously, you know, to modify. Um, but I'm like thankful. Like the the thing that you, people should go by is like if, if you didn't do it before, you probably shouldn't start during pregnancy. Um, so that's you know what I tell people. But I I'm continuing to move and do all the things. And I felt that you know during third trimester, I've definitely slowed down a little bit, still lifting weights, but you know I I have taken it day by day. Um, so wow. I'm thankful that throughout my pregnancy, I've been able to still move and do all the things. So I'm. <laughs> proud <laughs> it will really set you up for a great birth hopefully <laughs> because I do yeah. say that like the more you continue your fitness it's just gonna serve you in labor and yeah. I remember I would prep myself I always think about like the labor contractions you know they say that you know they go like a minute long I know some people it varies but a minute long of these rushes and I, when I'm in labor and I'm like, I can get through a minute. I always think about me on the treadmill and I'm like, okay, I can do a minute run on the treadmill. I got this. And I always link it back in labor to fitness. And I found I've given birth four times. The fitter I am in my pregnancy the easier birth is for me. And and I had one pregnancy where I did not work out at all. I was like, woo, I'm just going to sleep the whole time. I really (laughs) thought I was listening to my body, but I also know that I was just being lazy. And it was my hardest birth. I had, I got a cervical lip. I like just got so fatigued. Um, So I think you're really setting yourself up for success by continuing with, you know, keeping up that fitness level. I think it's great. And you're a really good example for people who are watching who are like, what do I do? I want to keep working out. I'm pregnant. Am I able to? Yes. Yeah. I know that. I mean, today, for example, I was very, I'm like, oh, thank good thing I've been working out because you can tell me your experiences because you guys have multiple babies. Um, but I turned 35 weeks today and I went in and they did the ultrasound and they said, okay, 
looks like his belly is in the 99 percentile <laughs> and it looks like you are measuring about like seven and a half pounds and I was like okay so we got we got five weeks to go and he's seven and a half pounds and I was like I literally was like well good thing I've been continuing to work out but like are those accurate like ladies tell me I need to know I don't know if they are I feel like they're always guesses I've I had one where they were like they told me Forrest was massive and yeah he was a little bit bigger than my other babies but he was eight pound four and they were like oh he's definitely going to be like nine and a half pounds (laughs) and I went I went like almost six days over and he was an eight pound four baby and he totally fit in my vagina like I, he came out I was fine I didn't tear but then I had it in the back of my mind like I'm gonna have a big baby and I think that that does a disservice to women as well when you're getting fed this information I think just take it with a, a grain of salt do not start fixating on the number oh my god I got five weeks left like how much more is he gonna grow how no. big is he gonna be yeah that's act exactly how I feel because um they told me something very similar around like eight pounds or something uh around 35 weeks and I was like I'm sorry what like I could give birth to this baby right now like that's like the normal that's actually (laughs) on the on the like bigger side for people and I would say this thing that I've told many women since, because I will tell you the number, the pounds that my daughter was, but, um, when your body is making this baby, it's like you, you are definitely going to be able to, to do this. Your body knows what it's doing is what I'm saying. And that's what somebody told me. And I was like, okay, I'm not going to worry about it. I had an 11 pound baby, um, with my second and my other two were like 10 pounds and all of which was totally fine. And my vagina went back to normal and yeah. everything was great. <laughs> Did not tear. Magical vagina. So, I always call it. But I would say it could be way less than that. And I've heard a lot of people be told like, oh, you're going to have a nine pound baby. And then they give birth and it's like seven and a half pounds. And they're like, why were they telling me the whole time that I was going to have like this nine pound baby? And like, how can it really be that off? You know? Yeah, I think I always take that with a grain of salt. I oftentimes I'm like, don't even tell me. I don't need to know what they weigh. They'll come out whatever size they are and I'll just yeah. breathe through that ring of fire, you know? Totally. Yes. Okay, good to know. Good to know. I was like, I need to ask them later. Oh my God. What about your, like, you know, your sister? You said, have your sisters had kids before then, all of them? or Yes. Like, this is going to be the 13th grandchild on my side. Oh. What? Yes. Oh and my gosh. On my husband's side. So like, oh. it's very exciting for his family. My family, you know, they're just so like, oh my gosh, you're going to be fine. You know, like very nonchalant. So like <laughs> yes. this whole process, I'm like, oh, I'll figure it out. Oh, I'll, it will all work out, you know, because <laughs> I have literally 12 nieces and nephews. Oh my um, gosh. Dreams. But it's so interesting because also like two of so three of them above me all have kids and the first two had cesareans for all of them so Ah. for them I'm like having to just ask the one sister above me who has had um not cesareans and she's the only one who I can really go to to be like okay so what is the deal like what do I do for this (laughs) you know like I honestly can't answer that. I don't know. <laughs> right. you know like right. totally different situation. Every birth is different. Every, Every birth, birth is different. different. Yeah. Wow. That is, do you have like, do you, in your mind, are you like, Oh, because everybody kind of has a different approach. It's like, you know, I remember being like, I don't know if I want a birth plan. Like, Oh, I'll just like see how it goes. And then like, there's other times where I was like, okay, I definitely know that this is exactly what I want, you know? And do you have like in your mind, this is how I'm visioning it or, you know, like a way in which you I see it. I wish I did, but no, I literally have, <laughs> I have no plan really, um, which I should probably start like figuring that out. But I also am like, I know I'm the type of person where if I do have a plan, I have to be very like set on it, you know, so mm-hmm. I don't want to yeah. myself to like set myself up for, you know, not success or like being worried or anxious or anything. So I'm kind of just like, okay, let's go with the flow. 
Um, I love that approach. We'll see what happens. I highly recommend that to people, that especially is first the way. time moms as well, because I was sort of the opposite. I was like, had all my plans. I had my posters up on the wall. I knew exactly what I was going to do and where I was going to birth. And, you know, I'm going to move from this position to that position. I was so over the top, like in control of it all for the first Mm -hmm. birth, like read everything you could ever read on birthing. Um, and then when my birth started off so different than I expected with me having prom pre-rupturing of the membranes and then like, having to be watching the clock, trying to get myself into labor, like everything sort of unraveled. All the plans went out the window and I was like, oh, I'm just holding on for dear life. Like, I don't know what is going on. (laughs) And I think I almost set myself up for failure because I had too many expectations. And Sarah and I talk about expectations all the time, like surrendering, letting go, and just allowing the experience to unfold in the way it's going to unfold. Yeah. yeah. I've been going to, um, I don't know if either of you did it, but pelvic floor PT. Ooh. Oh. And I honestly, like before didn't really, I was like, Oh, I don't, I don't think I need that, you know? And then I started having really bad, um, pubic symphysis. Oh, oh yeah. Where it feels like the pressure I on mean, your pubic like bone. It's, you know, it's like my pubic bone is like constantly bruised. Yeah. Oh. like, I didn't know that's what it was called. Yeah. So like you walk or like when I wake up in the morning, it's the worst. Or like as I'm trying to turn at night, like I feel it. Oh, and basically yes. it's just like all the hormones is making, you know, your body, your pelvis prepare. They're becoming super relaxed. And so they're like rubbing up against each other and like out of position. So like I literally, wow. I think it was the first day of my third trimester. And I was like something is going on and of course like I had like a scare like I literally was like Chris we need to go to the hospital now (laughs) we went and like they literally were like okay um we're gonna take all the tests and then they come back and they're like yeah you're fine like (laughs) just the pubic synthesis and like all of that so I started going and it's honestly been great it's like little you know little exercises with the band that type of stuff um but now that we've done like two sessions, the final two are just like little stretches that you can do and all of that stuff. And I'm like, okay, as long as I'm preparing, you know, like, yes, we don't have to be like every single day do these exercises, but I know like, you know, even like the way that she was telling me to breathe, I'm like, so am I going to remember that? She's like, probably not, but if you practice, maybe it will come naturally. So I'm like, that's the most I'm preparing to be honest. I'm like, maybe that's it will great. come, maybe it will, you know, we'll see, but but worth a shot. And what is your, do you have, I know we said let's not have plans, but in your mind, your ideal postpartum experience, talk about kind of fitness and getting back into fitness after postpartum, you know, at, are you going back to work at some point or are you just again open and surrendering to how you go and you'll just see how you feel in the postpartum period? Totally. So my plan is definitely to take off a few months after, maybe like yeah. three to four, um, depending on how I'm feeling. But according to the pelvic floor therapist, she was saying I can start doing she already has a program for me like literally the oh, next day cool. you'll or the day of you can start back with your um like 360 breathing your baby hugs and she's like that's going to help you get in tune with your pelvic floor again so mm-hmm. it's literally like for the first week just doing that finding your breath finding your pelvic floor starting to activate your core muscles again and then i think it's by like week 2 or 4 i can start doing like squats, obviously not weighted squats, hip bridges, that type of stuff. Mm. Um, you know, it depends on, you know, if you tear a lot, obviously all of that type of stuff. Um, but she's like, I think that you should be totally fine. You'll start moving and then like, we'll go from there. So I'm like, okay, perfect. Like this isn't going to keep me, you know, out for too long. We'll see, but (laughs) it's nice that I could like, you know, start moving. I'll obviously start with breathing no weights and then see how I feel from there. But 
I'm honestly like very excited. <laughs> yeah. I'm yes. so challenge. I oh know. My goodness. Oh my god, it's so cute. Did you find this pelvic floor PT through your doctor? Like, I feel like it's not something very, co- at least for where we live. Like, it was not something very common to talk about because I have um, diastasis recti. I think that's oh, how yes. you say it, yeah. diastasis recti. So mm-hmm. I have that like major separation. But I do feel like if I had been doing that three sixty that baby hug, that breathing, it really would have helped me um, to be able to like pull that back in afterwards. And I didn't really learn that until after baby number two. And so I feel like I've constantly been trying to play like a major catch up. So it's so awesome that you're doing that before. And it's something that in France and like the UK, like it's something that they do in other countries. Um, you know, as like a normal part of your pregnancy and postpartum in America, I feel like it's not something that we're like, okay, this is really important and we need to do it. Like, was it your doctor that told you about it or? No, honestly, it was um, just a lot of like friends in the fitness community when I was talking about how I was yes. having just such bad pains in my pelvic region yes. already at like 20 uh. something weeks. And I didn't even have like a full belly then. So I was like, I can't even imagine the discomfort I'm going to start to feel. And my job yeah. is to, to continue to move. Mm-hmm. Um, so I definitely like got so many references and reached out and I'm so happy that I did because I, I like, you know, sometimes when I go to physical therapy you're like oh okay like I knew I know I should be doing these exercises you know they're like little things and you feel like okay I don't necessarily need this but like after the first week and then she basically would just give me a few exercises and you're there you're I would do them for a week and I'd be like these made such a difference like even now when I'm on walks and I start to feel like a little bit of that um round ligament pain and stuff yeah okay I really should be like I'm leading with my belly to walk (laughs) I should not be doing that um and I start to use the breathing and it really does Mm. help alleviate that discomfort um you know they also recommended the band and all of that to put around your belly um but no, the doctor, like, and it's so funny because once I started doing it and started talking about it on Instagram more, yeah. so many people reached out and said, I'm so happy you're doing this. It changed my life. And then wow. a lot of people are like interested as well. Like, what do you do there? So like, I still have to, that's, I still have to make a video to tell people, but like, it is super important. And I remember like, even before I got pregnant in the first few months of pregnancy, I was like, oh yeah, I've heard of that. I don't think I need it. And now I'm like, right. I feel so much better and I feel like my pregnancy has been easier because of it wow yeah I mean you wouldn't you wouldn't necessarily think that you need it because it's not even something that's talked about very much and that's the thing is you just kind of suffer through some of that pain I think women do like I definitely did I had that pain so intensely with you know my 11 pound baby and I was like is this because I'm just like eating a lot of donuts and not doing much movement with my body is this why I'm in so much more pain (laughs) or is it something else like I it was just like you know with my first baby I was like walking five miles a day with my second I was like I got this it's fine and it was such a harder pregnancy for so many reasons but that was a huge one was that exact pain that you're talking about I was like wow I couldn't like I was like ice packs heat like pillows between the legs I was like what can I do to help alleviate this do I need to sit on a donut pillow like it was just nuts and so it's really awesome. I love that you shared that because I think that's going to help our listeners so much um, because it's just not, I don't, I don't think that's something that we're given as a tool in pregnancy or in postpartum. Yeah. I was like, when I had like the scare and I thought something was happening after that, I was like, okay, I got 12 weeks left of this. There's no way I can feel this way. Like <laughs> what can I do? And let me tell you, I've yes. never taken better care of myself ever. Like, <laughs> yes, right. Like I was really like, I told, I started going to acupuncture more, which I normally go to acupuncture, <sighs> but like I started it back up I went to the chiropractor. I was really like, this is self care that I need to bring with me after this because I've never felt Absolutely. better. Absolutely. Like, more committed to oh well done and you need it even more like when you're you got that little baby and you're nurturing this little sweet being it's so easy to put yourself last so like cultivating that self-care especially during the postpartum 
time is really incredible. What would you say to people who are listening who have maybe like fallen off with their fitness routine like me um, and who <laughs> I feel like I always have an excuse. Like I'm always like, well, I'm just so busy or why would I want to wake up at 5 a.m. and fit in a workout when I would I prefer to be sleeping at that time? Um, what would you say if there are people out there saying, okay, I want to jump back into it. I'm time poor. I have so much going on. What are the, what are the steps, um, towards re reconnecting with, you know, fitness? Totally. I think that one of the biggest barriers is like, sometimes we think that we like make too big of a deal of it. Like it doesn't need to be the hardest workout of your life. You don't need to like sweat gallons of sweat, you know, like Mm -hmm. you literally just have to make it feel good. And that's so different for everyone. Um, Some days feeling good to me is like lifting my heaviest weights. Some day it's literally doing a 10 minute class. Um, And so I I would honestly say like put on something. I also love wearing like bright colors because Mm -hmm. (laughs) that is like also, my thing like I say like bring your own energy but I'm like how the heck do I do that and I'm like okay well if I put on something that I feel good in that like makes me happy when I look at it like it's gonna make me feel better so I always love to put on bright colors too but it's like sometimes we just make a bigger a too big of a deal of it like we need to just literally like and I think that's why we like dread it too we put too much pressure on ourselves to look a certain way to have a certain weight you know like that type of stuff like and it's also tuning into why you want to work out. Sometimes that's the barrier too. Like if we're doing it like just to get in shape, then like you're never going to stick with it. Um, yes, if yeah. you're doing it's like, you know, you're going through this really tough time in life, you know, you're overcoming these obstacles. And it's like, sometimes when you're just like literally hold a plank for 30 seconds, like that solves a lot of your problems. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, if I have a plank for 30 seconds, I can do this, you know, like, yes. so I would just say start small and don't even think that it has to be your hardest workout. Definitely not, especially in strength too. Like some people, I do find that some people think like, oh, strength, it's not hard enough. Like I'm not sweating. I'm not out of breath. And it's shouldn't be that way like you lift the weights you enjoy it and I also say in the classes we take the work seriously but never ourselves so like Uh, yeah you're showing up for the workout but like you know have fun during it like it doesn't have to be this huge ordeal yeah my my husband does it for peace of mind like he it quietens his mind he can get in his head a lot and he goes he he does f45 he goes to do that almost every day because it's his self-care. It helps him feel stable mentally. It's like his thing that he does and how he shows up for himself. But I'm always like, well, I'm just too tired. I'm too tired. I don't want to do it. I'm too tired. But I always feel amazing when I've had a workout. So I think you're right. It's about and changing your perspective with it. I think when I look at it as like, oh, I'm trying to, I need to tone up or, oh gosh, I've got such a mum bod now. Like, you know, that little self-critical voice comes in and we start comparing ourselves to other people or being like, oh, I've got just a flat mum bum. Like, oh, it's going to be too hard to get it <laughs> perky and cute the way everyone's got it these days. So I, why should I even bother? <laughs> these are all the little thoughts that go in. Um, but I love that idea. Like just kind of showing up, having fun. That I think is the secret to longevity, having a, you know, a sustainable relationship with fitness. Definitely. And honestly, like, I mean, I know I sort of said this before, but, um, I never found that until this, until doing your strength classes, because to, for me and maybe somebody out there could relate to this, but getting in my car to drive somewhere to like go work out and then getting back in my car and driving home is a thing of the past when I would, when I'm a mom. If you live in LA like us, it's like it's a half hour to get there and then it's an hour class and a half hour back and then exactly. I'm going to shower and then I need to eat, you know? So I'm just like, that is, that's just not going to work. And so yeah. 
you know, Eric um, had gotten me this bike and now we just use it for strength training because I go out to our garage every morning. I make a coffee and go to the garage and turn it on. And it's like some mornings we have time for 10 minutes. Some mornings we have time for 30 and or 20 but we do it together and the sun is like not even up yet. The sun starts coming up as we're like finishing and it's amazing. It's the best way to start the day. Yeah. And Cal, if you do it with Cali guys, cause all you need is your app to be able to do it in a couple of ways is then you're giggling the whole time. Cause she tells really funny stories <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and she has this thing called the soundtrack strength club. So Tez, you would love this, yeah. but she does it. Um, she like has like a, an album from a movie and um does like an entire workout to the album and then talks about the movie the whole time so like will you tell them about about that that's so sweet yeah so I literally started like I feel like a huge thing of workouts is the music and so I would find myself like teaching classes and then be like oh my god remember this from this series or from this movie like oh and it would like bring you back kind of to like that like major nostalgia so I was like what if I created these strength classes that are literally based upon upon move, the playlist inspired by like my favorite movies. So I, um, the first season that I did was literally November and December and we did Mean Girls, Legally Blonde, Princess yes. Diaries, um, <laughs> Elf during Christmas. Um, I just did like a 10 Things I Hate About You class. Oh, I love did that, that movie. One. I, did that. <laughs> I did that class. <laughs> so it literally, it also like, I was like, this is the perfect way to, to like bring people in and really realize that like strength doesn't have to be that serious you like you know and people like they're not thinking about working out doing it they're thinking about the movie and then they're like oh my gosh they write me I'm gonna watch that later like I forgot how good that movie was yeah (laughs) that has been like something really really fun that I'm like really enjoyed teaching and that just came out of your own um I mean I feel like I noticed that it just came out of your own like I'm just you were just doing it and then all of a sudden it was like it became a thing like where you created like a whole street club out Mm -hmm. of it and then you had like outfits I had <laughs> oh, I went all out. Like I literally like it was, for Mean Girls. I dressed up as the cool mom because like this was like recently after I found out I was pregnant. So I was like perfect. Oh my god! As that. So I just like I'm like this makes it just so much more enjoyable. And sometimes that's yes. what you have to do when it comes to working out. So yeah. Oh. Uh... Well, thank you so, so much. We are we are so incredibly excited for you to become a mom. Literally, my favorite thing in the world. I always look back on that time. It was so special becoming a mom for the first time. And then those first hours and days and weeks, it's yeah. just you're in this little bubble. So we're oh. incredibly excited for you. You have that coming up so soon. Yes, I'm so excited. Aww. And Charlie, and Charlie's going to be a sibling, right? Charlie's Your be dog, an older sister. <laughs> my child, Charlie's the dog. Older to her. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she literally gets treated as a human. So yes. we're preparing her to not be an only child right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. So we'll see how that goes. But I think she's fingers crossed. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. And where can people find you, Callie? So the Peloton app. So we download Peloton app and do we just type in Callie? Download the Peloton app. You can literally look on strength. Yeah, you can literally just look Callie Gullickson. Um, And yeah, my workouts are in there. I'm on, you know, Instagram, Instagram, TikTok, all the social media stuff. So. And what's your handle for social media? Um, Just my first and last name. So at Callie Gullickson. Oh, amazing. Well, thank amazing. you. Thank you so much. You're such a breath of fresh air. And I cannot wait you to really hear are. how your birth goes and your <laughs> postpartum. And I'm going to be a new working out gal watching your videos. You've been I'm going to look for you. on Instagram. That's Maybe right. You'll join Sarah and Eric in the mornings. <laughs> we, although I can't get up at 5 a.m. I just can't be an awesome like that. It's just not going to happen. I know. <laughs> well, <laughs> You can like stock what workouts they took. 
and then yeah, you know, we that's go. Right. That's a good idea, and then I'll do the same. You can see what later, we did later in exactly. the day. I'm always like, up. what exactly? I'm always like trying to see. Okay, what's the newest uh, Cali workout? And oh. then that's what I end up doing. So oh, anyway, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, it's just been such a pleasure to have you, and I just enjoy working out with you so much. Yeah. Um, and I'm so excited for you and for motherhood and all the amazing things and. Um, and you guys have been listening to the Mother Days podcast. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Bye. Bye. Bye.